cool. <laughs> well, hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Nailing It podcast. I have a special guest here today, Greg Coran. Um, he is an awesome human being, and this is his official bio, just so that we make sure um, that we, you know, we, we tell you exactly who this guy is, all right? Um, so Greg is an award-winning filmmaker and co-founder of Crossbow Studio, an independent film and video production company specializing in uplifting stories that inspire, educate, and entertain. He also runs a digital marketing firm focused on helping you generate leads for your business by creating compelling content aimed straight at the heart of your audience. Oh, wow. Greg, that sounds good. <laughs> He is an author of the number one best-selling book. This one here, yep, Don't Sell Me, Tell Me How to Use Storytelling to Connect with the Hearts and Wallets of a Hungry Audience. As a speaker and coach, Greg is happiest when he is sharing his 30-plus years of storytelling, marketing, and brand-building experience to help you shortcut the process of finding your voice and rewriting the future of your business and life. When Greg is not helping clients share their unique story and building their business, he's either hosting neighborhood movie nights or writing and developing his next big film project. Well, hello and welcome to the Nailing It podcast, Greg. Hey, Steph. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no worries, man. Um, so what we've got is we've got like the, the quick 10, basically, which is the quick 10 questions that we're going to get um, from you so that our audience knows exactly who you are. And then we're just going to talk about this awesome, um, book that I have in my hot little hands. And I have, right. uh, I have, um, I've, what do you say? Posted it. I've got yeah, some post-it notes. Yeah. Bookmarked it. I bookmarked it. Holy cow. Yeah. Someone, someone bookmarked my book. <laughs> proof that somebody's read it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in a nutshell, like in your own words, like, I mean, awesome bio, but what do you do, Greg? At its core, what I do both in our production company and uh, through the digital marketing agency, I help people connect to their audience through storytelling. I use storytelling to help them stand out from their competition and build a brand that grows an audience like their ideal audience, not just a wide audience, yeah. um, and therefore their revenue. And you, so you teach them to go deep, not wide. Yeah. Correct. That's exactly right. Yeah. I, feel, I help them find where there's, when people build a brand, the only examples they have are these large brands. Yep. Right. Like Nike or Coca-Cola. Coca yeah. Right. That's nothing. Look you how can't funny we just said Coca-Cola. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but uh, you know, that, that's not the example that you need to hold up. So, I help people kind of dig into what is the core of who their, who their audience really needs to be or is, if they already yeah. know it, and, and then to reach them. Yeah, wow. And how long have you been doing this? I think 30 uh -huh. years. You were laughing when I said yeah. 30 years. <laughs> uh, yeah, it has been. A so. little while. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, a few decades. <laughs> and how did, you, how did you get into this? Like, you know, how did you start all this? How did you start this? I stumbled my way into advertising and marketing way back in the day. So, yeah. you know, picture Mad Men. That was yeah. kind of yeah, what it right. was like. That's what Glory it was like. Right? We were making stuff up. Yeah, and wow. so, you know, we were, I was working for the big brands, uh, you, you know, giant brands like Toyota and Hewlett Packard and, and those, kinds of, uh, those kinds of companies. And uh, it wasn't until 2005 when I kind of set off on my own, formed my own company, uh, which is a, basically a production company, a video production company, because that's my passion is filmmaking. But we also did digital marketing at the same time. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. And, and who... That was the shortest I've ever gone through my history. <laughs> it's a very long, <laughs> shortest like... route. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, how, have you, how have you found clients? Or how have, how have clients found you? Most clients have found us because we started to build a reputation uh, in a couple of key uh, niches, if you will. Yeah. Um, we, you know, we, we started honing in on them early, early on. And uh, truth be told, we picked the wrong niche early on. Uh, yeah. So, but we, you know, we went pretty deep word spread because of that, right? You do a good job for one, one client. They, the word travels pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, 
And it wasn't until the last, last I would say, five, six years that we've um, uh, kind of repositioned, re- kind of refocused on what we're really good at rather than serving whoever comes through the door. Yeah, right. And, and you, you made a point there about you were with the wrong niche? Yeah, because so we were chasing the niche because um, of what we thought that they were. Right. When you're a yeah. marketing company, you can kind of say, well, I'm, I help architects or I help lawyers or, you know, whatever. Yeah. But yeah. after a little while, uh, it, it becomes important. You know, when you when you when you do a lot of it, you start to really think like, hmm, do I really need to sell more soap or you know, yeah. <laughs> insurance yeah. or, you know, whatever it is, or the companies that we're helping. And for us, it became uh, me especially it became a lot more important about the person that I served, right? The people that I helped because you work so closely with them. Yeah. So you had, so the people that had the right mindset that were open to uh, kind of learning and growing uh, together, those were the people that I wanted to work with. Yeah. So, it, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've been in a position where someone has hired you for your expertise and then they micromanage you or they tell you what to do, right? Hello? <laughs> that ever happened? Um, yeah. Uh, I, I got, you know, Nobody's got time for that. Yeah, no. And so uh, I think in your notes here, you sort of, instead of going for like architects or lawyers, yeah, you really focus on a certain person. Sure, that, absolutely. And, and let's call it the avatar, yeah? Like let's, let's go the whole, you know, client avatar worksheet stuff. Like, you know, you focused on someone who was of a certain age, a certain demographic, a certain uh, industry, no, it was more about just the person themselves. Yes, early in the early days, and the easiest way for when people start to build a client avatar or their ideal client profile or, you know. <laughs> However call, that stupid thing is called. <laughs> yeah, they, they, everybody calls that something different. And I even work through it in, um, in the book, but it's, it's because it's an important exercise to go through. Yeah. But yeah. The, the, the place people start is usually by industry. Yes. Versus by mindset. Where are they in their journey? Yeah, right. right. So most, the people that I help the most are maybe a year into their business or three years into their yeah. business. And, yeah. and so they, they understand w- where, you know, when people are just starting out, I'm not going to oh, teach them man. anything because, because they're, they know everything, right? They have to make <laughs> a couple of mistakes they have to, it's not like I have all the answers, but I can, no. I know what they've been through so I can help coach them. Yeah. Right. And I mean, how did you, how did you know that when you, you, you serve these people and like, how did you validate the fact that, yep, this is, this is my niche. Like these are the people that I want to serve. They you know, how did you validate that you wanted to continue working with them? What were the signs that you had? The biggest sign that I had was the, I don't, I don't even know who, who kind of pointed it out at me once when I was talking about the type of people that I'm, I'm most attracted to and that are most attracted to me. Yeah. Um, when I was describing them, they, the, the person I was talking with turned around and said, that's you. <laughs> like it was me. Ah. X number of years ago. So, yeah. you know, so it was, so I realized, oh my gosh, I'm trying to invent this thing over here when in fact it was my journey. I knew the journey better than anybody because I've been on it. You've done it. Yeah. So today I attract usually small business owners that are creative in some way, yeah. right? They don't have to be filmmakers like me. They could be an author or a coach or a solopreneur that's, you know, building. It, it, they're, they're as passionate about their craft as they are about serving their yep. audience. Yeah. So that, that's really the people that are most attracted to, uh, to working with me. Yeah. Um, and in fact, it just plays into, I did a lot of thinking on, you know, what am I about? What am I leaving for the world? And I, and I realized that I've got a firm belief that our society, notwithstanding, uh, we, creative folks should be able to have a sustainable business based on their craft. Yep. Right. Yep. It's the same, like other people might want to serve uh, teachers because they too, I mean, they're, it's a value they they give such a value to the society, but they're underpaid. 
Yeah. I just happen to work in the area of, uh, you know, artists and authors and those people who are creating uh, worlds of their own. Yeah. Uh, that I, 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 just, I just believe that there should be, they, they shouldn't have like a day job and then they do their stuff on the side. Yeah, right. It should they, all they, be just... They same. actually can build a, a sustainable living from their, from their craft. And that's, that's when I really started going, leaning into uh, my own, you know, my own passion, which is filmmaking. And so now I'm kind of doing more and more and more of that. Yeah. And so you've got this whole back catalog of just, you know, marketing, digital marketing, all this sort of stuff. And then looking at it's yourself. All, it's all necessary. Yeah. All of, yeah. Right. <laughs> but you've got now like you've come from that sort of marketing element and then you've gone, Oh my God, I'm so in love with filmmaking and the entire process. And I, I want to lean more into that. So then you're sort of, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you've sort of stepped away from that agency side and you've gone, right, I'm going to help people do this. Uh, in a way. Yes. I've been, what yeah. I've been doing is just taking on, those clients that um, uh, I'm excited about working with. So I can, I still have some legacy clients. But yeah. I'm, super, yeah. I'm super choosy now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's really what it is. It's not out of snobbery. It's just that I, I want to choose who I spend my time with in that because yeah. uh, I would, re if, if, you know, if they're a drain, um, oh, if the man. client doesn't want, want to, doesn't want to learn or grow or, or actually move their business forward in any way and they just want to, you know, pay money for a, a, yeah. for a wrist, you know, yeah. um, I would rather be spending the time on my own, on my own project and my own film projects. Yeah. W was there a point where you were kind of like moving down this sort of um, individual, you know, this is the, who I want to work with. Was there a point when you're like, Oh my God, I don't think this is working and I should go back and, you know, and, and serve like these, or you're like, nah, I'm good. I'm just going to keep going forward. Like, has there well, been any bumps in the road, maybe? There's been plenty of bumps in the road, <laughs> but, but never retreats. So oh, never of, re yeah, okay. Never cool. retreats. So, so I'll redirect. Like I said before, my path is not a straight one. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll redirect quite a bit, and I have. Um, but, you know, if I give it a go, and I have a plan, and I execute the plan, and it doesn't work, I, I'll, 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 I learn something from it. Yeah, yeah. So then I'll just redirect. Yeah. Right. I love the, I love the way you phrased it. You'll redirect and you'll yeah. retreat. Like I'm already just talking to you. I'm like visualizing this sort of like retreat and like yeah, everyone no, on horses are running out. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but you're creating this story in my brain about the visual. There you go. Yeah. yeah so yeah. yeah, it's very cool, man. <laughs> um, outside of work, like, you know, where do you like to spend your time? Uh, uh, it's, it's all in film, film and filmmaking. Yeah, right. If I'm not watching them, I'm making it. I'm writing it. And and behind you, there's like, I can see Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think that's Silence of the Lambs there. Yeah. Yeah, you're a big movie buff. Yeah. 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 I just collected a bunch of those posters. I'm also, obviously, a, a complete geek. So, yeah. So I'm, uh, a know, movie geek. A movie geek. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Cool, man. Um, let's talk about habits. So obviously running a business um, and, and being your own boss, no, no one's going to walk in right now and go, Greg, um, you had a report to do. Why haven't you done it? You're like, oh, sorry, other Greg. Um, I'm just going to put this <laughs> right now. <laughs> so being your own boss, um, what are some things that, that maybe you've had to realize, you know, I got to do this, like, being your own boss, maybe some tactics that you've learned on the way that have helped you to succeed. Sure. Um, the three biggest things that I've kind of learned the hard way and put in place that have helped me move the needle the most. There's yeah. a lot of activity. I can be real busy, right? It's easy for yeah. oh, it's so easy to be busy, right? Be. Yeah, it's so easy to be busy. It's busy not for days, easy. man. Oh, I'm so yeah, busy. And get nothing done. Right? I can't come to lunch. Super busy. Yeah. I've, I've missed plenty of, the, of life because, uh, you know, yeah. I've made myself so busy. But the, what really the things that have settled down is the first one, I'm a night person. So, oh, okay. Yep. I'm a night yeah. owl. So, so I'm usually working late into the night and not paying attention to the time. And suddenly it's dark, you know, and I yeah. realize, uh oh, wait a minute. I haven't gotten up from my desk in hours. <laughs> But the thing that has helped me the most is putting in a morning routine. 
like getting yeah. up early, like an early morning routine, getting up early and kind of getting my head squared away for the day. Yep. Right. You know, so that's, that's number one. That helped me write that book. That helped me write the book because I didn't have time. I, I knew I wanted to do it, but I didn't have time to squeeze mm -hmm. it into the day. So yep. I kept setting the clock 30 minutes early and then 30 minutes earlier than that. And then for another couple of weeks, 30 minutes Whoa, earlier. Oh, that. geez. That's right? so, I just kept, so I kept just backing it up until suddenly I had an early morning with time to write the book. And wow. then I got, then I got the book done. I had a plan. I had this major plan to get the book done in 90 days. Yeah, wow. 90 day it plan. Didn't, <laughs> it didn't happen. It didn't happen. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, it totally failed. But it took like mm, five months to get, the, yeah, okay. to get the book written. But still, it's written. Like it didn't oh. exist before and now it's done. Actually, so like, that, that was number one of, to help, helping me keep things moving. Um, the second thing is, is not to de depend on my own willpower first thing in the morning. So yeah. to put, put priority things in order. What are the three big things that have to get done? The money tasks is what I call them, right? Prioritize yeah. those tasks. And that's already on my desk waiting for me in the morning. So I do it the night before. Yeah. So when I come in in the morning, it doesn't matter how groggy I am. I go, oh, what are we doing? Oh, well, you just feel your way in the dark. You're like, oh, there's the three things I need to do there's today. The three things. Yeah. And I do that before the phone starts ringing. I, yeah. don't even, I don't even answer the phone until about 11 o'clock anyway. So it's like yeah. I, I get a good uh, you know, three to five hours in yeah. before I'm interrupted. Yeah. So that's, and, and, and I'm, if, I'm, if I'm true to my list, those, three, those priority tasks are done. Yeah. And the, rest, the rest of the day, you're winning. Anything I'm after winning. your big winning. three, you've, you've won the day. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Because you had a plan. That's number two. Uh, the, the third thing is to, even if I don't get those things done, to move, move something forward, even small yeah. steps. So keep some momentum every single day, no matter what, no matter what. So that's, like the, that's the thing, no matter what it takes. You gotta move something forward every day so that you feel the momentum and you feel, you feel successful. Yeah. Right. So no matter how small the little task might be. Yeah. Respect Doesn't that you still did it and you're still moving forward and don't throw everything out because you didn't That's get right. something really big done and you're in the wrong direction and da, 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 da. Yeah. Like, Cause you can get so depressed. You could be such, so oh. depressed when you go, Oh my God, I got nothing done today. I, I started out I'm and a I, failure. I'm a failure. Exactly. Stop. And that doesn't do you any good. That's yeah. That's some, some you know? heavy mindset stuff there. Yeah. yeah, and I've spent a lot of years being depressed about not yeah. moving things forward. That yeah, totally. When those things started to click into gear. You realize, oh wait a minute, you know, I'm, I'm I am moving. This. Yeah, I am moving. It's moving I am on. moving. I'm winning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm growing. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, like this. I am so. I put so much pressure on myself. Like, oh, yeah, don't you? you know, right? And my husband's like, Steph, you're doing so well. Like, stop beating your own self up about not doing the thing. Like, and that is a perfect practice. You know, just, you just groggy Greg gets up and follows what boss Greg did for himself yesterday. That's right. And exactly. You work your way in the dark in the morning and just see the three things and like, just get yeah and everything else that in the day that you've got is pretty much icing on the cake yeah, yeah icing on the cake oh man just that yeah. that is brilliant absolutely brilliant so awesome anyway those are that's 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 what kind of i feel is most important yeah right i love it um i want to talk about your book sure don't sell me tell me um like ah, i'm big into storytelling awesome. Uh, awesome. and like I think I was subconscious. You're good at it too. You're, you, I, you, you did it without even knowing. Oh, good. Okay. Because I didn't realize. I, was <laughs> I didn't actually realize I was doing it until, until yeah, I, I sort of met you and, and, um, and you were sort of like blatantly pointing it out, you know, like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this, Not I, subtle here. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read something here. <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. Because I, I think it absolutely like, it's like, Deer in headlights moment, yeah? Yeah. Um, telling your story. Build on your theme. Most companies, when they start to develop a brand, think about their logo 
or their business cards, or maybe their website. But as we've seen, your brand is actually tied closely to your values. Uh, and by nurturing your values, you develop a theme. And out of your theme grows your story. <laughs> so I, um, I, I can't think of the other book that I'm reading at the moment as well. But it's, it's a big thing about when you start business, you pick up, you're like, oh my God, I need a business card. And I've got to have a logo and the color, like it's got to be yeah, green. Yeah. And I need a website. And like, here you go. Here's, here I am. I'm a real business. Yeah. But when you actually, that, none of that is actually doing business. Correct. That is it, correct. I think that's textbook crap, you know, start a business, pick a name, you know, build a logo, put a website together, you know, like it's like that checklist, but that's actually, that's got nothing to do with it, right? That's, yeah, and not when you're starting. Yeah. Not when you're starting. I know plenty of people now that sell without a website or I haven't had a business card in years, you know, it's not necessary. Yeah. I mean, so I think where it gets, where we get hung up is those things are important at a stage, like there's a place for them, right? Sure. Let's not completely ignore them. You exactly, know. exactly. But they're not, um, they don't define your brand or your brand values. The, the reason I wrote that, the reason I wrote that book is because after years and years and years and years, too many to talk about here, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I realized that most businesses, small and large, but mostly for the, this, this applies 100% to, to a small business, right? A solopreneur or one employee, 10 employees, 20 employees even easily. Yeah. Most businesses' brands are tied to the CEO, the founder's core values. Yeah. If that person is bold, their brand, brand is going to come off bold. Yeah. Right? If they are more of the, uh, you know, a thinker type, right? More like a... Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the way the brand will come off. No matter what you put on your website or what, you, uh, what color is in your logo. Yeah. So getting clear on what your, your vision and your voice is and what you value most, that's the, that's the most important work to be done, to build a brand. Yeah. Because doing that, that will make your marketing 10 times more effective. Yeah. Right? Because you don't have the money. We're go, going back to the, the, the huge, you know, brands like Nike. Or, yeah, exactly. The, you don't have that kind of money to push red is our color. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. They could spend a billion dollars and you got that red is that's Coca-Cola. Right? Yeah. So you don't have that. So you have to push your differentiating factor and, the, and that comes from the inside. That comes from you, your vision, your values, and your voice. Yeah, wow. Oh man, that's, I feel like ears on fire right now. Like, that, was, <laughs> that was phenomenal. <laughs> so anyway, that's what, the, that's what the book is about. And the, the rest yeah, of the right. book, once you kind of get clear on what that is, then you can build a theme around it. And then yeah. I just applied my filmmaking, my understanding of what, you know, the best, greatest storytellers in the world are in, coming out of Hollywood, right? They, they, yeah. they can keep you focused for two and a half hours yeah, right, right. on something. If you're having struggles getting the attention of your customer <laughs> for 30 seconds, yep. there's something to be learned from them. Yeah, so I applied that same, I kind of broke it down as simple as I possibly could, how to tell a story and where to fit into that story you know, where you fit and where the customer fits yeah. into the storytelling process. Because a lot of people think storytelling is just, you know, I'm Mickey telling you. You know, right. yeah. Yeah. Right. Just, I'm like, it's storytelling is there's a difference between making stuff up and storytelling. Yeah. Right. 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 So you're not making stuff up. You are finding that connection and relating it in the way that your audience is going to best remember it. It's, it's going to connect with them on an emotional level. That's what storytelling does. Um, there's another point here I wanted to make, and yeah. this is like, uh, I mean, this is like super simple, but like, you know, once you're about page story is written and like, again, going back to one of my websites, like it wasn't like, here's the business. We've been in business for this long. It was like, 
this is where I've come from and this is what I believe. And this is, this is what we do to help these yeah. people. You know, like there's, yeah. there's story in there so much, but you've said, um, once your about page story is written, I encourage you to turn that into video. It doesn't have to be long, a short video telling you your story instantly allows more of a connection to be made. Like getting more people to get in front of video like I was literally talking to a psychologist friend yesterday and she sent me a Facebook live about someone talking about business habits. She's like, Oh, Steph, I thought you'd love this. And I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. And I was like, seriously, like I said, I bet she doesn't do Facebook live very often because she seemed a little awkward, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. She should keep doing it yeah. just like you should get in front of more people like visually. And she, she, her, um, uh, what do you say? Um, objection was, well, I don't want people just watching me in the dark of the night. Like, and I was like, oh, that's, that's an interesting thought. Yeah. But I feel like I, to go. <laughs> I want, I want everybody watching me. <laughs> no, like I want people to be able to. That's your brand. <laughs> I want people to watch me or, you know, to watch my customers or whatever. I want them to watch them everywhere they go. And I want them to digest the content everywhere they go. Because whatever suits them, yeah? Like, yeah, I want them to be engaged. Yeah, and, what, and, and you don't know. That's the thing. You don't know how they are going to want to be engaged. Yep. Right? Yeah. If they're scanning through their feed on uh, Facebook or whatever, and your face pops up and and you start talking about something they're interested in, that's, that's awesome. That's, they, you yeah. know, that's way better than writing a nice paragraph on your about page and oh hoping that God. they come find you. Right. <laughs> so, so it's you and, and video has the added benefit of getting them to know you. Right. I, I've had people literally, I've had people call and say, I decided to go with you because oh. I liked what you wrote. Okay. <laughs> awesome. I you know, read like, that 400 word paragraph on that page and yeah. I instantly connected with you said no yeah. one ever. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing maybe, but, <laughs> but it's more likely that they're going to watch you. Um, you know, they're going to watch you and they're going to feel that connect. I'm sure that you felt yeah, this because you, you do a lot of video, right? Oh, so I, I, I'm sure that you felt this. Somebody's watched the thing, they contact you and they act like they know, like, like they're your best friend. Yep. And they know you, they know what you're about and all this stuff. And you're like, can I get your name? Right. Cause you don't even know who they are, yeah, but I'm they like, know, sorry. they like, and they trust you. <laughs> right. They were probably watching you in the middle of dark of the night. Yeah, the dark place. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but video has that effect. You can, you know, it gets them to know it gets over. That's half the, half the issue with marketing. Yeah. Right? That's yeah, the goal. Right. Yeah. That's the goal. Yeah. And video does it in 10 in seconds. Yeah. In an okay. Instant. So, so here's like, okay. So hot question. Yeah. And I'm sure people are dying right now to, 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 to hear like quick, quickest way to just get in front of video. Um, I mean, how to be more confident, how to get in front of video more often. Um, and, and, and where do I, where do I share it? Yeah. So uh, the easiest way, your phone. <laughs> iPhone, your phone, your Apple phone, or Samsung or Google. What, you it know, doesn't what matter. It doesn't matter. The cameras in these phones are, are so much better phenomenal. than they were, you know, like they're phenomenal. Yeah. So that's yeah. all you need. Get yourself in. I mean, they're terrible in low light. So get yourself into good light. Yep. Wherever that is outside yeah. shade, you know, and I think that's a good point. It's not always about the camera. It's about, it's not about the lighting. Camera. It's all about the light. It's all yeah. about the light. We could talk about this for days. This is another, another, <laughs> this is another, this is another episode. <laughs> <laughs> totally other episode that I could talk about, but, but in essence, that's, that's it. Photography yeah. is all about light. It's not about the camera, the camera. Yeah. yeah you can get a better lens here and there, but all you yeah, need well. to connect with your audience is in your pocket. Yep. Right. That phone, you all get right, that phone that out. Phone. Yeah. Just pull out that phone and, uh, and, and record a, you know, record your about page. Yeah. Start there. Talk about where, you know, why, why are you do what you do? Who do you serve? Why, why do you matter? right? Yeah. What do they, what do they care? And share it on, you know, you could, you could start by sharing it on Facebook. It's, it's perfectly, perfectly fine to not get it right. 
because the, the reach is so low. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right. Practice there, share it up and, and you'll, you'll start to get responses. You'll yeah. start to get responses. So, so pull, pull your phone out, do yep. it more often. Do it more often. Cause that's yeah. the only way to get comfortable with it's it. It's the only right? way to get comfortable. Yeah. yeah. You, you certainly don't have to do it. Um, you know, your first time out, you're not shooting a Hollywood film. Yeah. You're, yeah. Yeah. And people don't expect it. Yep. Just be yourself. Just be yourself. And, and exactly. lastly, where do I put my video? Like, where, where would you suggest? Like, I, I've pulled my phone out. I've actually hit record. Now, what do I do? I would, I would start with Facebook. So start That's with, where, just throw it into Facebook. Just throw yeah. it up. Yeah. Okay. Throw it up there. You know, people, a lot of people get weird about like, oh, I don't know about my, my uh, personal Put it, post I it on your page. I, seriously. <laughs> no. nobody's nobody's guess what everybody's so self-absorbed that they're not paying they don't attention. Actually care. <laughs> <laughs> they give but no put it on put it on your uh your business page that's yeah. where, that's how to separate if you want to separate from your personal life let, save that for your pictures of your kids or whatever and yeah on your on your business page you could put it you could put it up there awesome where yeah. to next greg like what, what for the next 90 days what are you working on what so what about you uh, I've got a large project that's coming down the pike fast and furious. Um, I've been shooting films for years, but they've all been short films or documentary shorts. You know, they're less than 30 minutes. We're embarking on uh, doing a full length feature film this year. Awesome. So, yeah, awesome. we're in pre-production now uh, and uh, we'll be shooting later this year. Awesome. Okay, yeah. sweet. Um, if people want to uh, follow you, stalk you, stalk your videos in the middle of the night, where, where uh, can they go? They can find uh, about me at uh, gregcorhan.com. Sweet. They can find about my films. It's probably more interesting than me. Damn. At uh, crossbowstudiofilms.com. Sweet. All right. And I will, of course, put all those links uh, down below and in the, in the article and in the show notes and all that sort of stuff. But um, man, Greg, it's been awesome um, having you here. Um, it's been yeah. awesome to be here. Yeah. No, I, I, I really love spending some time with you here and just learning more about what's going on. And man, oh man, you, you have given the audience uh, some serious little checklists and, and bonuses there. So um, well, I've got a, I got a little extra little bonus for you then if you like, because okay, go do it. Yeah. So if you go to uh, gregcorhan.com, if you're going to put this, like put this link in the chat. Um, someplace. Yeah, right? I'll totally put this so in the gregcorhan.com slash Steph. Woo. S T E P H gregcorhan.com slash Steph. Yep, exactly. And uh, we'll have, um, uh, I've made arrangements for, uh, for you to get anybody who likes it. Uh, to get the book for free, it's all by. I bought the printing, and uh, if you just pay for the shipping to get yeah. it out to you. Yeah, Greg bought the printing. You pay for the shipping. Yeah. 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 That's it. It's a it's a great read. Like seriously, it's an easy read. Story is just. I I think yeah. If people stop worrying about how to make my logo bigger, like I mean that's like a classic. You know, oh my God, web designer story. How to make my logo. Can you please make my logo bigger? No one yeah. can see it. It's like, nobody cares how big your logo is. It's about your story and how emotive it is and how it's, you know, sharing values and making an impact. Yep. That's yeah. exactly right. Start with that's story exactly first. Right. What? Start with story first. Yeah, exactly. Uh <laughs> build, your, build your theme around that. Legend. Exactly. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Greg. We'll, uh, we'll, 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 uh, officially wrap and, um, yeah, big thank you from everyone listening. Steph, it's been my pleasure. <laughs>